it will be about our journey through Cloud Native as a mentee and a mentor as well. So my name's Brad McCoy. Um, today, Meha couldn't come, unfortunately. So um, Shruti's gonna um, come and give the talk as well. And because she's done a lot of mentoring as well. So um, we thought it'd be nice to have both the mentee and the mentor perspective of it as well. So um, yeah, Meha um, and I worked for quite a while together. Um, we'll share our journey of all the different projects and uh, mentoring programs that we worked on as well. And uh, Shruti and I have also worked together um, from the CD Foundation side of things as well. So who is Meha? Um, she's a senior student of uh, computer science. She's a intern at Red Hat in India. And she's just become the Kubernetes CI signal lead for the next release, which is the 1.28. She is a GSOC uh, 2022 uh, mentee for the Captain project. Uh, also, she did another mentoring project, which was the Linux Foundations one, which we'll talk about soon also. And she's now become a member of the Captain project, which is an open source project that was born at Dynatrace. And me, um, I'm a board member at the Continuous Delivery Foundation, where I spend time uh, working on strategy around mentoring and, and contribution as well and getting people in. I'm the comms lead of the Kubernetes release team for 1.28, which is the next release, uh, maintainer of the Captain project, and also on the technical steering committee of that, uh, CNCF ambassador, and then I also do the admin for the GSOC. So um, in terms of Cloud Native mentoring programs, this is some of the ones that we have. So um, the most common one that people know about is Google Summer of Code. So this one is more around for students. It's um, if you're already working or want to do a career change, the LFX mentorship program accepts anyone. The GSOC one is a little bit harder to get into if you're not studying, um, which is a bit of a shame in my opinion. And then you have the Google Summer of Docs as well. So that's similar to a, a technical program, but it's for you know, writing documentation as well. We also have Outreachy, which is for um, helping like minority groups get into tech. So, you know, whether it's in a region that doesn't have much tech or, um, you know, most of the tech is in uh, US or Europe. So it's trying to be focusing on diverse, diversity and inclusion for those groups. And then one that people don't really know about is the Kubernetes release team. So this one is like an apprenticeship for going through the release cycle of Kubernetes. Um, you don't have to be uh, an expert and there's real structured program that will help you, um, you know, with role handbooks and mentors that will come in and go through the cycle. So you could go through this for you shadow and, and sub teams and then you become the lead and then you can also become the release manager one day as well. How can you get involved in mentoring? So the CNCF have a mentoring Slack channel, also the CDF, uh, the CD Foundation. Uh, did anyone go to the mentoring sessions at 10 today? A couple, yeah. So at KubeCon they have mentoring sessions as well, which is quite valuable. I know um, Anna and Bart here, they have done them before and mentored people. So. I highly recommend for the next ones, you can you get grouped with six people. Not only do you get to meet nice people, you can see the mentor and and you can focus on uh, career, uh, education, coding. You know, there's lots of different sort of subgroups there, which are really helpful. And open source projects. So a lot of people think that you need to do GSOC to do a mentoring program but actually you can join most open source projects and they will mentor you. You know, if, if you start to come in, you say that you want to start contributing, you can be at any level as well. So you could be, uh, you don't even need to code. You could do documentation, good first issues. Um, and that's the really important part to do that community bonding. 
because you can't really just go to say I want to do GSAP for this project and they don't know you they like to the mentors like to know the people first and and sort of gain a little bit of trust and then they will accept you into the program and all of this information that I talked to and much more is at the CNCF mentoring repository in github so you can go there and that will give you very detail um, of how to get involved so um, now I'll talk a little about to set the scene of the journey that we've gone on and if you would like to go down this journey as well um, it, it's a pretty good formula of, of how to get involved so this is an example of me has one so she started off contributing to the kubernetes project was the first one she then did worked on a lot of docs worked on some good first issues and then become a member um, and then started working on the captain project as well so um, one thing that was good is she she became a mentor as well because all the new students coming in she would actually guide them in the right direction which was really good to see and then um, she started a GSOC project with us so we did one on GitOps with Argo, Flux and captain integrations and she then joined the Kubernetes release team as the CI signal shadow where she did that for two releases um, they mentored her and then she went as the lead for the next release now she then successfully finished the GSOC project so um, that's a paid project as well by the way which is quite lucky for, for students especially it, it can give you some pocket money to maybe attend events like this um, and then after all of the work that she did she then became an official member of the captain organization then she got a scholarship to go to the open source summit in dublin to talk about it got an internship so you can see that all of these small milestones leads to the bigger picture so you know after her her red hat internship i'm sure she's going to get a really nice role and then that will just lead to uh, to opportunities you know going f further and then this talk of sector to kubecon that she couldn't attend to but i'm sure there'll be much more that she'll talk about and then yeah promoted to the release team so would you like to talk about your experience about your gsoc projects as well yeah sure hi everyone um so my journey was kind of different than Meha's in the sense that I didn't really start contributing before um, getting into like Jenkins GSOC. For me, I was using it as a user and I was like, huh, you can contribute to this really cool project? That's awesome. Um, so there were a couple of cool projects that were listed down. Um, and for me, for some reason, uh, what I worked on was interoperability with CD events and Jenkins, like creating a plugin for them. And again, it, it was just kind of an abstract idea for me, and I was just so fascinated by it. I was like, okay, let's do this. Um, so initially, I just got in touch with the, with the community, and shout out to CDF community. They're amazing folks. Everyone was just so welcoming, so encouraging. Uh, so they were like, okay, like this is this is how you write down a plugin, and and let's like gave me a lot of opportunity to explore also. So I had a lot of space to just kind of see what I wanted to do with this. Um, so the whole plugin we created that that was really cool. Um, and then when uh, we had a talk about it at CDCon at last KubeCon, and a lot of people would come to us and they said wow, that's a really cool plugin you worked on, it's interoperability with CDUNs, which is like coming up in, within um, the CI CD space, like interoperability through a common interface and a standard. Uh, and they, the, the articles that we had written for GSOC, they are publishing it internally in their companies and all. So it was, it was really cool understanding the, the idea of how to get into a bigger community of like CDF is a very big community, a lot of cool projects, and it just getting in there, like just dive right in. Uh, and I guess the, the good thing is sometimes, you know, you have these amazing mentors, so you are diving to the deep end, but they're still there to, to make sure you're, you know, <laughs> not gone astray. Um, 
And, and as Brett mentioned, it does open up a lot of opportunity uh, in the future because I, my, my future employees, well, my current employees, through the project I'm on, like just working on open source um, and, uh, and contributing to like a project that has a lot of other components, um, like, like technically and also just um, like the community, very supportive, um, very, yeah, very fun. So some of the challenges along the way, we had uh, different things with communication, different cultures. One thing that the GSOP project that we first did was that we didn't plan it very well. So um, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, goal setting, time commitment, and then just some boundaries as well. Um, one one of the biggest problems I think is imposter syndrome. Do you think so? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's special. Like that's true for the mentors and the mentees. Mm -hmm. um, particularly true for the mentees. I feel because they are um, like relatively younger students who are coming in, might not have so much experience, and then. You know, you have these, it, that was also true for me because I just really thought, I, yeah, this is a, a, an extraordinarily large project <laughs> and I don't know nothing about, at this, like, yeah, with a Java, maybe I can do maybe like Hello World and a bit more complicated stuff, but a Jenkins plugin, working with another interoperability tool to make a CI CD workflow really fun, that was just out of the scope for me. <laughs> Um, but, but, but yeah, again, that like understanding that the whole community is there to support you um, and, and your contribution is going to be valued and to, to value like the, the mentor, mentee, like, or the mentors and that their, their help, that's very, very um, helpful. Yeah, and can be from the mentor side as well. So a lot of people think that they can't mentor or you need to be really advanced on the project or, but anyone can be a mentor as well. So like I was saying before, Meha, when she started, she was, she started off like really simple things, but she was mentoring everyone coming into the projects. Because one thing when you're going into open source projects is it's really difficult to, you sort of say hello and it, it unless you get like some response or engagement, you sort of bail and go try something else. So you've got to try and match the right projects as well. That's one thing that like I've bailed from a few projects that I didn't feel the right, uh, it wasn't a good fit, but um, yeah, focus on the projects that you want to work on and then yeah, the community will help you with that as well. Yeah, um, and one thing I to remember on that point is um, when I started working on the project, uh, <laughs> like the, the, um, I was just like, okay, here's what I have to do. So I started exploring and I did a lot of exploration. Um, and I remember a part of it was like I started pinging the Jenkins API to get a certain response back. But then the mentor, my, my, my mentors, they were so helpful, they're like, uh, <laughs> I think you can do it in a much easier way. <laughs> and the good thing was that they were actively exploring. So when you do have a new project come up that is um, that, that a mentor or like the community is like, okay, this is cool, let's build this, let's develop this. Um, sometimes there's not very clear directions on where to go. So it's like a journey both the mentor or the mentors and the mentee is on. You're actively discovering, okay, this seems viable, we can do it this way. The other part, okay, we can explore other different, right? So it's a good point that you don't have to be an expert, you just have to be like moving together mm. and like mutually um, helping yeah. in a way, yeah. Which will, um, the next slide, this is one of my friends, uh, Happy Hacker, he works in Kubernetes. Um, he's been in there for quite a while and quite renowned in the community. He gave me this mentoring book uh, the other day. And what he was uh, emphasizing was that um, there's three things that you should worry about. And it's you have value, we succeed together, and others matter. So um, it's probably, it was a really good conversation that I had with him about it. And 
he pretty much devotes his life to mentoring and, and he's, he takes it to other countries. So uh, I'm from New Zealand originally, so it's funny that we had to come to Amsterdam to talk about this as well because the book is actually from New Zealand too. So that was an initiative um, you know, that I'll probably go back home and read to my daughter. Um, I think it relates uh, very heavily. So you have value. So like anyone can be, as we said, a mentee or mentor and you shouldn't be scared to get involved. Like you can do it in so many different ways um, because the, the gap from contributor to maintainer is very big now. So we do need to start having mentees come forward to, to, to close that gap. So there can be more maintainers to make a sustainable ecosystem because we all love open source and one day it will just be too much. You know, you have just a few maintainers and, and we won't have enough velocity to drive innovation, which we're doing in Cloud Native. So, yeah, like I said before about the structure of planning, I think when you're working with the mentee and mentor, you should pl spend a lot of time planning up front. So break your tasks down into really small milestones. Don't go for like a big milestone. And as you, as you solve these like small milestones, you can celebrate them. And, and that's like sort of cascades through. You get excited, you want to do more. And that would lead to the bigger picture. So it, when we do it next time, we're going to spend like two days just planning out the whole program of work and then you can see where you're at like you know if they need help etc as well um yeah i do agree it's like bringing in the concept of like like software delivery you're just like doing smaller iterations yeah. and well not doing them rapidly but doing them at a speed that works for both of like the mentee and the mentor right um so you are like you set small milestones so that's just also gonna help both, um, especially the mentee. Like in, in my case, it, it helped me understanding, okay, this is okay, this is a smaller milestone, this is what I'm gonna do, rather than just like having a really big goal to achieve, um, to be able to break down into smaller tasks also help uh, be more uh, open with the, the research part of like working with the project. So that's a good point, yeah. Mm. And communication, I think communication is like one of the biggest factors because uh, everybody's different. Uh, we need to have more empathy around people and, and really understanding uh, how people are different. Like, for example, when I'm in Amsterdam, we're, we were walking around last night and there's all these people on bikes. and. <laughs> There's, you know, when you walk out in front of a bike, I'm sure, I mean, has anyone walked out in front of a bike here in Amsterdam? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and, uh, and they were angry birds and, like, they were pretty angry. And um, if they understood that I'm from New Zealand where there's more sheep than people, <laughs> we don't have these trains and trams and, you know, these crazy things, maybe she would understand me more and then not be angry and, and you know, she would treat me better and and be happy with life and that's one thing that we see as well so I've had mentees that are quite shy by nature so they don't engage as much but it's not because they don't want to it's just because they're shy and there could be like many other reasons of why people are different yeah I, uh, I have a similar story from Valencia last year uh, <laughs> where um, my mentor now friend we were just like walking together and we are like biking and we accidentally um, stepped into the the taxi zone wherever they were gonna and this guy just looked at me with so much anger he's like you guys are on the taxi zone get out of here I was like sorry man I'm from India that <laughs> it's like that's what we like we don't have these designated zones we just go where we want <laughs> <laughs> so that's really um true in the essence to understand that how culture shapes you so differently mm -hmm. and for for others to understand maybe it's not what you're always seeing like face value like there's there's more um depth to how someone is perceiving things someone might be communicating like another thing um i i have seen with um like cultures is in certain cultures there's more a vertical 
um, like relation aspect where there's a like big difference between okay I'm a mentee this is a mentor just like l yeah respect should be there but it not not in a sense where it's yeah I'm o I'll only take instructions from you and you know like I don't have a place like I shouldn't come forth and maybe like like express what I think um, so so that that is also part of like culture and communicating is uh, with especially with open source projects is just on, on a wavelength that can work for everyone and mm -hmm. maybe making it a bit more horizontal so everyone can come out and contribute because as we said like the mentors are also in this journey together it's just, just mm -hmm. not they're not just like leading you you're like walking with them in a way right yeah like some of my achievements would correlate to Miha's as well so as she stepped up I would step up more as a leader as well so if you do what a mentor, that can be really good for your professional, uh, both in you know the open source game and then in your work as well. So, as a mentor, you will rise up as well as a leader, and then you can even mentor the mentors and, and go very far. But in the culture we talked about, um, I think it's good to bond with community projects first because there's some countries that do like micromanagement which is a lot different in their sort of, you might think that they're not doing anything, but they're just waiting for your instruction because they're used to like telling you every single thing to do. Yeah, and with open source, that's what different because mm -hmm. it thrives on contribution, it like thrives on ideas. So unless you're just waiting for someone like, okay, just I'm just waiting for instruction, like what should I do? You're not allowing creativity, you're not a, like giving a lot of space to like explore. And that's something I loved about like my GSOC project was I had so much space to just explore and do like the, the, the post that I wrote, like the paper that we have to write on how you would accomplish or achieve this project. It was just <laughs> deeply all over the place, <laughs> like the things I researched and written down. But it was interesting because I got that freedom to to you know see yeah wow this is something that you can do and build so that's I for for open source specifically it's important to practice um, this that culture of um, connection yeah and we all learn different as well so it's important to understand that you know mentees and mentors learn different so some learn visually some learn by doing so I think that's an important to try and understand that as well right so it's not like the old days in school where the curriculum is very set and they'll only teach one way like there's a lot of advancements been done in this space yeah um and as a mentee too for for me um sometimes when we would have these milestones to to sort of communicate it to the community it was also very different because a lot of people understood it very differently some needed more like a technical um, POC done uh, and for for other members they needed more like something that was visual so they can just um, help understand how we are gonna go through with this so yeah that's um, that's an important point to take care of and also neurodiversity so this is you know I've spoke with Bart a lot about this and people's brains work differently as well so people with ADHD they you know you can't have like do you want to have an hour session uh, they're not gonna pay attention for for one hour but like having short meetings like 15 20 minutes would maybe be more effective there so um, if you haven't really heard too much about neurodiversity that's an interesting one to understand people as well like you don't want to be that angry bit on the bike that was angry with me you know <laughs> so yeah neurodiversity is uh this this is what i love about this community too because they're doing so much work and community work in this it's really nice to see people saying to their employers that they have adhd as well like before they were probably scared about it and now it's very open because of this community is helping them do that which is amazing to see you know it, it's it's celebrating that everyone's different also. Um, yeah, just a um, quick point there. Like in, in terms of the mentee too, they, we, we need to create a space for them to feel comfortable to, to share um, like how, how are they different and like we need to celebrate that, right? Because as we said in the last slide, we are all really different 
And, and, and that's something that we really need to sort of like celebrate and um, especially with open source, yes. Mm -hmm. Commitment as well, so um, I think it's, it's good to be upfront if you can't commit to things because some of these things are, it's quite time consuming, right? And yeah, sure. especially mentors, they have big jobs that sometimes they have to go to, they might take on too much work. So I think just being honest about your time is fine and I've, it's always worked out. Um, yeah, I haven't seen much problems with that as, as long as you communicate it. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the point comes to communicating, right? You like, uh, <laughs> I remember with like the CD, um, one of the projects, I think some of like one of the mentee maybe j got really busy and they just kind of dropped and the project was just like hanging out in the open. <laughs> so what's important then is like communicating, hey, like I might not be able to commit for, which is totally all right, um, but the com like the, the mentors community also need to know what's your commitment like and it's okay if you cannot commit um but it's a still it's still good whatever work um you have done the communication that's that's important and i think um having the awkward conversations is good to have fast as well so um there's a bit of a trick to when you have awkward conversations so you should talk about like how you feel so like for example i feel sad because i thought that we were going to do this project together and would spend more time and then they can sort of relate to that more and, and it stops it from being less awkward for sure yeah. um and and this is um experience not coming from gsog but from another project where i where i had to tell like um the my mentor and i we were just talking i was like um i would maybe like like to talk more um and have ideas and I was, the, I was like, maybe we can do more if you, if you can. <laughs> so it's important to be, to be open and yeah. le regarding commitment. Yeah. And we could talk all day, but like um, <laughs> positive feedback, like don't give negative feedback. Um, it's sort of management 101, yeah. And I guess we have time for questions. Would anyone, any questions about programs or... I got the mic. Well, you feel free to come up and, yeah, <laughs> if you have a question, just line up. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Brad, for being a mentor. I think uh, from my point of view, it's really uh, a lot of work being a mentor. Mm. Uh, it drains lots of energy. It uh, requires lots of commitment. Uh, what motivates you uh, to be a mentor? Yeah, I guess... Um a little bit what I talked about before, like uh, I have a big passion for open source and I want to see it sustainable and I want to see it grow. So my my focus is not, uh, I've been a software engineer for a long time and my focus now is to uh, help with initi like strategic initiatives. Like, so mentoring gave me that leadership now. So I now focus more on strategic initiatives around communication channels for mentoring and, and other you know open source projects so i guess it uh, accelerates my career as well so i do it for first of all because i like to help people um, and i've had mentees that mentor me as well so i have had multiple mentees that um, because one one challenge with mentoring is that i could go do all this really technical stuff and, and be the best of the best but because I have to mentor people, I, I don't get to spend that much time doing, you know, the advanced stuff. So I, that's a sacrifice I have to make. But um, definitely to uh, go more to the leadership role in the open source community. So I hope that answers the question. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay, I'll just uh, do it from here so I can just pass the microphone to the colleague. Uh, my question is around the slide that you had uh, keeping, um, providing the um, atmosphere, the, the environment for people to actually come forward with how are they different. Mm -hmm. And um, that like really, uh, for me, makes m so much sense. And I try to do it in a way that actually I am first one to say how I'm different and how now, knowing that I can do something 
and the team works better with me and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I see that, like, uh, especially in younger people, it's very hard to actually come out and say some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So can you provide some more, like, um, uh, tips how to do it, how to actually create that environment in which uh, especially young people, but everybody can actually mm -hmm. come forward and feel comfortable comfortable about who they are and uh, know that there is, is going to be better once they know and every, the team knows about it. Yeah, it's a very good question as well. Um, I think um, this community is very inclusive, so um, pretty much any CNCF, CDF project that you go into um, a, a really good way to start meeting people is just to say hello. Um, you could say like, hey, my name's Brad, I like surfing. Or y you can relate to those people and you don't have to, get, some people give a life story, like they pretty much give their CV and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if you just say hello in like the general chat of a project that you might want to work on, um, you will see that everybody will say hello to you and then it will it's not like a work environment. Work environment's a little bit harder because the culture is very hard. It's got to come down from the top. But um, hopefully one thing that you did see about this time at KubeCon is that it's a very inclusive um, community and the only way to get involved is to get involved and, and talk to people. Um, yeah. I, I'd okay. like to say something sure. about... Um, yeah, with, uh, I'll, I'll talk about my experience with my mentors and the environment they created with me, like for me was so compassionate and they were like, they were so open that I, um, I didn't have to, like I was not reserved in the sense, oh, I should not talk with them and I have these deadlines, I must meet it. For, for, I think for us, it's creating that community where people feel welcome and it's okay that it's really a contribution that matters more than like getting it done, getting it right. Um, because again, um, people learn differently and all of that. So we should create that space, that um, compassionate um, space for the, the mentees to feel comfortable because as you said, they're young folks, right? So they might not feel very comfortable, especially when you have mentors like much experienced and so you feel, oh, is it okay if I, you know, will, would that be okay? But yeah, we, from the very f like, start we have to sort of as mentors or as a community just be inclusive and tell them hey it's okay i like i had amazing mentors amazing community and everyone was very welcoming and very very um kind and accepting yeah it's okay even if you commit mistakes like write a paper that's totally off <laughs> it's not it's like you can do it easily but it's all appreciated like it's all appreciated yeah okay thanks uh, that helps yeah. This is the last question, by the way. Cause I thought, yeah. yeah, so, like, starting off from what, like, how I feel about this um, talk, like, I'm very excited. It's my first uh, KubeCon, so um, it's my yeah. first approach. I always try to understand how this uh, open source community works. It's, like, a huge mystery for me, and I try to, like, look it up from different angles. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, yesterday I decided to join this Mandy, um call like uh, yeah the event uh, that was today and like we were speaking about visions smart goals and like because like basically yeah, I, I don't know where to start from mm -hmm. and yeah um like i have the feelings i would like to ground all that i've taken this like week into something solid like built on rock and not like let it blow away and mm -hmm. um, i'm still like looking forward on how to do it I like yeah. I would take any suggestions at this point. Uh, wh whereabouts are you from? Huh? Whereabouts are you from? Where am I from? Yeah, like, like what country do you live in? Uh, I live in Germany. Uh, Germany, yeah. So th there's lots of, uh, they have KCD Germany as well, and they have meetups there. So um, meetups can be a great way to feel more inclusive in, in as well. So there's a CNCF community groups website. Um, Europe is, you know, in Australia, it, there's not too many, but... That's why I asked you where you live, because Europe is very, they have meetups all the time. So it's a really good way to make friends um, and, you know, through your interest, through technology and other things as well. So, like, most of my mentees were friends now as well. Maria's here too. So really easy to make friends. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you got something out of it. And you always can reach out to us as well. Yeah, for and sure. 
thanks for coming and helping me to talk. It was yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming and staying with us. <laughs> for 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 35 <I know>. now. Yeah. <laughs>